What's up guys? For today's watch review we're talking about the 8900 series from Casio G-Shock. I've got several different types in front of you today so, and we're going to take a look at all of them. Uh, before we get started let's take a quick wrist check. Today I am rocking my Luminox. I've done a review on this before so check it out. A yeah, really fun timepiece, very good quality. But going back to the 8900, let's do a quick 360. They all pretty much share the same uh, body, so I'm just going to show you this one. Nothing fancy on the back, your standard G-Shock case back. And here is the sides. Alright, uh, starting off with our first talking point, price. So the price range within all of the models you can get, uh, you're looking at about 80 to a hundred dollars. So this model, this is the GR8900. This is the solar powered one. Uh, these go for about 90 to a hundred dollars after taxes. Um, the non-solar one, so just the G8900, this will cost you around 80 to 90 dollars. And the G Lite version, the GLS8900, will cost about $85. So pretty much in the same ballpark, just the difference of you know 10 to $20. So not too expensive, but definitely within most people's price range. Uh, next item is tactical, schmactical, dressy, or casual. Definitely a tactical watch, and keep in mind when I say the word tactical, I just mean military, law enforcement, first responders, um, outdoors, survival men, you know, any kind of rugged environment I just use tactical to encompass all of that but yeah these watches can definitely weather the storm uh, anything that you can throw at it so 10 out of 10 on that um, not dressy but definitely casual as well next item is functions I'm just gonna go over functions with the standard display GR8900 because um, the GR and G8900 all share the same functions with the exception of solar power um, so starting off, you've got world time, alarm, hold on, let me uh, get a better focus here for you, stopwatch, timer, and back to main time. Uh, the GLS 8900 is a little bit different, so you've got stopwatch 1, stopwatch 2, timer, alarm, world time and back to main time. Now the cool thing about the stopwatches is you've got a dial right here so the top half is for stopwatch 1 and the bottom half is for stopwatch 2 and that's just a quick reference so you can basically have stopwatch 1 and 2 going and you don't have to keep it on that screen you can go back to I mean really at whatever screen you're on these dials or this indication will start blinking indicating where you're at in regards to time and it goes all the way up to the 60 minute mark so basically if you're you know if you're at 30 minutes you'll see it blinking at the 30 30 minute indicator which is just really cool um, you know it's not something you see a lot on G-Shocks I just really like the ability to not be locked in on the stopwatch screen when you're using the stopwatch all right, going on to illumination. Let me go ahead and turn off the lights real quick. So they pretty much all share the same style. So this is your G8900. Uh, these two are the GR8900. And then this is your GLS8900. This is the kind of illumination that I think G-Shock does a really good job at and not that absolutely ridiculous one LED that I'm pretty sure everybody hates. Uh, next item is visibility. Uh, visibility 10 out of 10 as you can see. Very easy to see. Uh, even this one. This is kind of like a pseudo negative display. It's not really uh, it's more of a green font, so it makes it easier to see. Um, same thing with the GR, just the beautiful big numbers. Um, however, with the negative display one, 
it is slightly more difficult. You can see it fine here through the viewfinder. I will tell you that in daylight when you're outside, uh, good luck seeing it. You're going to have to use the light or, you know, kind of point it towards another light source to see it clearly. But other than that, really, it's, you know, it's perfectly functional. Um, so, yeah, unless you're just super nitpicky on negative displays. Next item is button and crown placement. Button and crown place, or the button placement is fantastic. Um, protected just enough to where they'll never be pressed accidentally, but very easy to push in, not difficult at all. Uh, next item is band quality and comfort. So the standard 8900s, the non G Light series, they're all the same. It's your typical dual clasp band with a steel keepers or metal keepers whatever metal they are um, very good quality uh, the G light is a little bit different it feels it has like a different finish or texturing on it it's just smoother I would say the G light version is better as far as the band goes but not by much I would say it's probably just because it has this fancy camouflage design on it and that's what it what's making it smooth but overall 10 out of 10 if you know you're used to G-Shock bands and last item overall and should you buy so the 8900 is what I consider one of my top favorite uh, series of G-Shocks from the G-Shock series uh, just because first of all practicality the size is perfect um, visibility is top-notch really you can't go wrong with the 8900 to me the 8900 is like a a bigger version of the 2310 series um, you know like a just a solid workhorse of a watch they don't ask for much they don't look too showy but they just really get the job done for what you need you don't have to baby them because you can pretty much just beat them up all day long and they'll survive it so yeah those are my thoughts uh, for you should you buy uh, definitely if you are in the market for a digital watch and you're looking for something that is just easy to take care of very operator friendly very user friendly then go for the 8900 you can't go wrong and I know it seems like I say that for all of my G-Shocks but that's just because for most regular digital G-Shocks you really can't go wrong they are you know extremely rugged extremely durable and uh, very budget friendly I mean you'll you'll buy a G-Shock and you probably won't need to buy another watch for 10 years or so unless you like collecting watches like me but anyways that's all I gotta say for now I hope that this video helps you with your next watch purchase thank you for watching and tune in for my next review alright bye